This is USVI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us for USVI News. I'm Emily Matson. We begin today with details of a dramatic water rescue in the waters off of St. Croix. Video of the rescue provided by the U.S. Coast Guard when a missing swimmer was reported in the vicinity of Annalay Bay on the north side of St. Croix. Around 12.30 Tuesday afternoon, a woman called 911 to report her husband was pulled underwater by a wave inside one of the tide pools and she didn't see him resurface. Rescue crews found the man trapped in the blowhole of the tide pool. And because of the rough terrain, rocky reef, high winds, and the remoteness of the area, the Coast Guard called in their helicopter to get that man out. Once they landed, they rushed the 65-year-old man to the hospital for treatment. He survived. This was a dramatic rescue coordinated successfully by the U.S. Coast Guard, the St. Croix Rescue, Virgin Islands Department of Natural Resources and Virgin Islands Fire Emergency Services to all work together to get that 65 year old man safely pulled from the tide pools off the waters of St. Croix. A couple wanted for murder has been extradited back to St. Croix. On Tuesday, Virgin Islands police brought back Jonathan Rivera and Nazinger Makeda Williams to the territory. Rivera has been charged with first degree murder, Williams with accessory after the fact for her alleged role in helping him get away with murder. Police say they were nabbed earlier this month in Polk County, Florida. They're charged in connection with the July 6th, 2022 homicide of 28-year-old Jamarley Christopher Alfred. The incident happened on Williams Delight turf after Alfred and Rivera got into a verbal altercation. Police say Rivera ran the victim down and shot him multiple times, killing him. Both are sitting in the St. Croix jail under hefty bonds. A registered sex offender is arrested for failure to comply with registration requirements. VI Department of Justice agents arrested Javier Rodriguez last week for failure to comply with registration requirements for sex offenders in the Virgin Islands. Rodriguez was nabbed on St. Croix. He was convicted in July of 2008 for unlawful sexual contact. He's required to register his home address and place of employment every three months, which VI Attorney General Denise George said he did not do. If you plan on imbibing this Thanksgiving, Virgin Islands police say do not drive. And they've teamed up with the U.S. Department of Transportation's National Highway Safety Traffic Safety Administration to make sure you make it to the Thanksgiving table. With the Thanksgiving holiday kicking off a very merry time of year, the VIPD says it's essential to take some time to remember that buzzed driving is drunk driving. And if your plans to celebrate include alcohol, they say to be sure to plan for a sober driver. The organizations are reminding drivers that drunk driving is not only illegal, but it's also, of course, a matter of life and death. As we hit midweek, COVID-19 case counts remain steady with a bit of a spike as we head into the holiday. According to the VI Department of Health, there are currently 37 active COVID cases territory-wide, with 20 on St. Croix, 16 active cases on St. Thomas, and one active case on St. John. And as many of us get ready to gather with family and friends this week, health experts are reminding everyone we're still dealing with a triple or tridemic, and hospitals in some parts of the country are seeing resources stretched thin by patients with a series of respiratory viruses. Stephanie Gosk has all the details. Hospitals across the country are being pushed to the limit. Emergency rooms are filling up with cases of COVID-19, the flu, and RSV, the respiratory virus that can make children under a year old extremely sick. There have been days when we've had 30 to 40 children uh, waiting in our emergency departments, waiting for an inpatient bed. Uh, and and uh, that's unprecedented. In New England, cases of RSV are down, but flu is up. Some hospitals in Boston say their pediatric ICUs are maxed out. The backup begins in the emergency room. We have large numbers of patients who are in the emergency department awaiting a bed, many for 12, even sometimes more than 24 plus hours. In Ohio last month, newborn Maxwell Schumann waited 11 hours for a bed while suffering from a severe case of RSV. His parents, both health care workers, noticed he was struggling to breathe. He was coughing, he wasn't eating, and uh, he had a silent cry. You could see him physically crying, but he wasn't making a sound. 
Maxwell was admitted to the Cleveland Clinic and quickly intubated. He went into respiratory arrest but was stabilized, and he's now recovering at home. You saw a hospital system stretched really thin. Does that make you concerned? It worries me for people that don't live a couple minutes away from a world-class hospital. Um, that we had to wait so long for an ambulance and so long for a bed. Another complication, a national shortage of drugs like amoxicillin, an antibiotic used to treat bacterial infections, which can be triggered by respiratory viruses. Some of our providers are prescribing alternatives. Parents are very frustrated because they have to call or go to a number of pharmacies before they can find the medication. The advice from doctors for Thanksgiving, take a rapid test before getting together with family. Consider wearing a mask if you are vulnerable. Increase ventilation and stay at home if you are feeling sick. Some good advice and other health news today. It's the leading cause of cancer deaths. Lung cancer kills more in people in the U.S. than colon, breast, and prostate cancers combined. That's according to the American Cancer Society. But a new report is offering some hope when it comes to survival rates. Here's more on the data and why health experts say more work still needs to be done. In the fight against lung cancer, health experts call new data on survival rates remarkable progress. It's a terrible disease and honestly, in the past we've had trouble moving the needle with regards to survival improvements. But the latest report from the American Lung Association shows the five-year lung cancer survival rates has continued to increase from 21% in 2014 to 25% in 2018. However, a person's odds of surviving five years after diagnosis is only about 20% in communities of color. Now, I diagnose lung cancer on a daily basis and we're just not catching it early enough. The odds of surviving cancer increase significantly when it is diagnosed early, but the report says about 44 percent of cases of lung cancer aren't caught until a late stage when the survival rate is only 7 percent. Last year, lung cancer screening recommendations were expanded to include anyone ages 50 to 80 who have smoked a pack a day for 20 years or two packs a day for a decade. In 2021, the report shows only about 5.8 percent of eligible people in the U.S. were screened. The challenge is getting the word out there, making people understand the risk of lung cancer, providing them with options in terms of how to get diagnosed with lung cancer, and then really explaining the importance of getting treated. Some research suggests as many as 60,000 lives could be saved each year if the 14 and a half million Americans for whom it's recommended get those lung cancer screenings. President Biden has extended the payment pause on federal student loans once again. It's a benefit which began in March of 2020 to help people who were struggling financially because of the COVID-19 pandemic. It comes as the administration's debt forgiveness plan remains blocked in court. The payment pause was set to expire in January and will now be extended until June 30th, 2023, or until the legal challenges are resolved, whichever comes first.